Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna Lee, also known as Woolen Buggers, and I'm a crochet artist and pattern designer based in Lund in Sweden. Today we're going to talk about one of my favorite segments of crocheting, which is crochet color work. Um, what is it? What do you need to know to get started? And what are my best tips and tricks for working with crochet color work, with graphs, or with a lot of different threads of yarn at the same time? Uh, and I'm making this video because I asked you guys on Instagram what you wanted to see from me and this was highly requested. And also I know that crochet color work is intimidating to a lot of crocheters and to a lot of beginner crocheters especially. And I don't think it should be because I think it's a lot easier than it looks. And I got sort of called out for this because I made a reel recently that was like five easy sweaters or sweater vests that you can make for winter. And it featured my own patterns like the skater boy sweater that I'm currently wearing. Uh, and most of my own patterns have crochet color work in one way or another and that's because it's my favorite part of crocheting. I love being able to customize and translate uh, illustrations into stitches. I think that's really cool. Um, but yeah, a lot of people commented being like, these aren't easy, these aren't beginner friendly. And I felt a little bit toxic, but also in my opinion, they are sort of beginner friendly as long as you're willing to learn, which I think you know, having a beginner's mindset is always about growth and being willing uh, and wanting to learn. And they're all using basic stitches and color changes. And that's basically the only thing you need to know, as well as how to carry your yarn or drop your yarn. And we're going to go through all of that in this video. So I'm hoping that crochet color work will be less intimidating to some of you uh, and just more accessible <laughs> overall, because I think it deserves to be. And I know it looks hard, but it really isn't, or it doesn't have to be. But before we get into that, I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone who watched, liked, commented, and subscribed for my last video. I had zero expectations putting that video up, uh, and I feel very overwhelmed with the response that it's gotten. I feel really, really grateful to all of you who have watched, even if you didn't watch the whole thing, I know it was long. Um, and to all of you who left comments, it really just made me so happy and it filled my heart with so much joy. And yeah, as someone who doesn't have a lot of crochet friends in real life, like being able to have this little community of uh, fiber artists, it just makes me so, so happy. And I'm really grateful for you all. So thank you so much. Um, and yeah, now let's get into today's topic. So what is crochet color work? Um, there are a lot of different terms floating around the internet and I just want to put out a disclaimer before we talk about what exactly crochet color work is that I might be using some of these terms incorrectly and that's because I'm a non-native speaker, I'm self-taught crocheter, I've picked everything up from YouTube, from Instagram, from other people's patterns. I've noticed that these terms are sometimes used interchangeably. I'm talking about tapestry crochet, crochet graph work, crochet color work. Uh, pixels, grids, um, graphs are all terms that sort of get thrown around and used interchangeably. And so if I'm like wrong about these terms, I'm sorry. So I hope you can forgive me and also understand that, you know, this is the reason that things are the way they are. <laughs> but basically crochet color work is a category of crochet techniques in which multiple colors of yarn are used within the same row or the same round. Uh, to create patterns or designs or pictures and other motifs within a crochet piece. So this is a crochet color work piece. As you can see, there are color changes happening within the same row. Um, I'm going to show you my girl boss vest, which in addition to the motif, which is a raccoon, is also striped. And if this was a vest that was just striped, it wouldn't count as crochet color work because the color changes aren't happening within the same row. So as you can see here, even if it goes from red to pink, the color change happens after each row has finished. So it's not crochet color work. Whereas the raccoon, as you can see, has a lot of color changes within the same row, which makes it a crochet color work piece. Um, and yeah, crochet color work can be used for a bunch of different things. You can make wall hangings, you can make clothing, you can make like pillow cushions, um, you can make basically anything. Uh, so yeah, that's why it's one of my favorite parts of crochet. You can make things very personal and very fun without it being very complicated. 
So now that we know what crochet color work is, I'm going to show you a couple of examples. So for my favorite crochet color work designers, I have to mention Ty, Ty Bailey, who is one of my absolute favorite designers on Instagram and who I admire and look up to a lot. Um, Ty makes a lot of wall hangings, usually featuring animals or landscapes that are quite realistic. And then he also has uh, some vests and sweater patterns and a lot of beanie bundles that are really cute. And I think all of his work, uh, exclusive, no, maybe not all of it, but most of it has crochet color work and that's definitely what his brand sort of centers around. And what I think is the most impressive about this is that Ty is a super fast crocheter I've seen in his reels and he uses a freaking 3.5 millimeter hook. Like, do you know how tiny that is? This is a 3.5 millimeter hook. That's tiny. I usually use a five millimeter or up because I'm lazy and I'm impatient. Uh, but it makes sense for crochet color work to use a smaller hook because the smaller hook you do or the smaller stitch that you do, the more detailed you can get. Then I have to mention Destiny, Destiny Makes, who is another one of my favorite crochet color work designers. Uh, Destiny makes a lot of wall hangings, um, both from her own designs, but she also uh, makes collaborations with her partner who's a graphic designer and those pieces are freaking cool So she recently made this really big wolf um, Wall hanging. It's freaking giant. Like it's so detailed um, It also is very cool because she made like an outline that's not Rectangular so most crochet color work pieces you're working with rectangular pieces because you're working in rows back and forth um, but this is a piece that um, I don't even know how to explain it in English, but it looks like it's cut out uh, and it follows the outline of the wolf rather than, you know, framing the wolf within a rectangle. And I think that's incredible. Honestly, stunning work. I uh, am so impressed by Destiny. I know she also works usually with a smaller hook size than I do. Uh, and she usually makes these really big pieces, um, which yeah, just blows my mind. And I know she also has a lot of um, free patterns out there. If you wanna try um, crochet color work, you can try one of her patterns. So we'll definitely check her out. I know she has a YouTube channel as well. I'll link it all down below. And the third person I'm gonna talk about is Aiden Wells Crochet, who I also shouted out in my last video. I think Aiden is one of the most fun uh, crochet color work designers on Instagram. She does this thing that she calls square of the week and she made this last year as well. And they're all stunning. They're all really fun. They're all really cute. She made this um, pom pom purin nanami kento uh, square that I'm freaking obsessed with. It's so cute uh, and so funny. And she's also made like, she made this amazing koi pond wall hanging tapestry. Uh, I don't know. I'm just really impressed by Aiden and her work. It's all really fun, really colorful, and uh, just amazingly detailed. Okay, so how do you get started with color work crochet? So as I mentioned in the introduction, I know that color work can be very intimidating to a lot of people, but it's really quite basic. So first you need to know how to make the basic stitches. Most crochet color work patterns use single crochet. I almost exclusively use half double crochet because I'm impatient and I want the added height. But if you use single crochet, you can be slightly more detailed in your um, color work or graph work. And then you can also make uh, crochet color work in double crochet. Basically, you can use any stitch you want, but single crochet, half double crochet, and double crochet are the most popular three stitches. There are a bunch of tutorials online on YouTube and other places on how to make these three very basic stitches. Uh, but because I'm nice, I'm gonna include it here as well. We're gonna start with the single crochet. So to make a single crochet, you insert your hook into the stitch, you pull up a loop, and you pull through both loops on your hook. That's the most basic stitch, a single crochet. For a half double crochet, you're gonna yarn over before you insert your hook, then you're gonna insert your hook, yarn over, uh, pull up a loop, and now you have three loops on your hook, and then pull through all three of them. That's a half double crochet. And then for the double crochet, you're gonna yarn over, insert your hook, pull through. Now you have three loops on your hook, pull through the first two, and then do that again. And you have a double crochet. 
those are all like beginner stitches, right? So that's basically all the stitches that you need to know to get started. The second thing we need to know is how to color change. And to teach you how to color change, I'm gonna switch from orange to the green, and I want I want my first green stitch to be in the green stitch from the uh, previous row. So I have one more stitch of orange, and then I need to switch back to green so that I can make a green stitch in the green stitch from the previous row. And to do that, I'm gonna start my last stitch of orange. I'm gonna make a single crochet um, like I usually do, but instead of pulling through the two loops and finishing the stitch, I'm gonna drop my yarn. And when I'm doing color work crochet, it's very important to realize that I will have a front side or a right side and a back side or a wrong side. So when I'm switching colors, I always wanna drop the yarn on the wrong side, which means I wanna drop the yarn here. I don't wanna drop the yarn here. And to figure out which side is your wrong side and which side is your right side, you can look at your uh, foundation chain tail, which if it's facing to the left, that means you have your right side um, or your front side facing you. If your foundation chain is facing to your right, that means your back side or the wrong side is facing you. So to switch colors, I have dropped my yarn. This is called my working yarn because it's the one that's currently on my hook. So I'm dropping my working yarn on the back, picking up my non-working yarn, which is going to be my working yarn in my next stitch, uh, and I pull through. And I've made a color change. So I started the stitch in orange, but I finished it in green. And now I can make my next stitch in green. And then the third and final thing that you need to know is how to read a crochet graph. I use crochet graphs in my own patterns and a lot of people are like, do you have this written pattern for this? I don't know how to read graphs. Uh, in my opinion, graphs are a lot more intuitive to read and a lot less um, highness to read than a written pattern because it visualizes all the stitches, basically. I started reading graphs very early in my crocheting, uh, so if I can do it, if, or if I could do it back then, you can totally do it too. So just for the sake of simplicity, for teaching you how to read a crochet graph, we're gonna derive from what I'm currently working on, which is this bookworm uh, sweater, which I'm gonna release as a pattern in 2024. And this is the graph for it. And as you can see from what I've crocheted and the graph itself, um, I've made a bunch of changes. So you can try to crochet the graph, but if it turns out wonky, don't come at me because it's not tested or I'm currently testing it. And when I uh, make my graphs, I always go back to make all of the changes when I'm writing the pattern. I don't make the changes <laughs> while I'm crocheting because I'm not patient enough to do that, I guess. So you can try it out if you want, feel free, but it's probably gonna turn out wonky. As you can see, a pa this is what a crochet graph, a crochet chart, a crochet grid, whatever you wanna call it, um, looks like. I call it crochet graph. I know a bunch of people that call it crochet graph, but I've also been told that it's wrong. <laughs> I've been told that it's supposed to be a crochet chart, but I don't know, you guys decide. I'm gonna call it a graph just because that's the lingo that I am most uh, comfortable with and used to. And uh, basically a crochet graph is an image with a motif that is gonna be a crochet color work piece, uh, which consists of a bunch of squares. And each square in this graph correlates to one stitch in your crochet. So uh, each one of these is, in my case, one half double crochet. Uh, this is called stitch fiddle. This is where I make all my graphs. Uh, it's really easy. What's great about this is that you can change your um, chart settings, meaning, see, they call it a chart. So maybe I should just call it chart, but you can change it to fit your gauge. So I am using a gauge uh, of 14 stitches by 12 rows. So if we change this, say I'm gonna make uh, something that has uh, a stitch row of eight. You're gonna see how that stretches this these squares. 
which is so practical when you're graphing. This is, say if I was using like a double crochet stitch, each stitch would be taller and that would help me figure out how to graph whatever I want to graph. So as you can see, when I made the row count smaller, it stretched the squares and that made uh, my worm look very oblong. So that skews my entire uh, pattern and I don't want to do that, so I'm going to change it back to 12. And now he looks more normal. <laughs> and as you can see, this graph is 43 stitches wide and 27 rows tall. And that's the size of my graph. And when I'm reading a graph, uh, this is a right-handed graph and I'm a right-handed crocheter. And I will always start reading a graph from the bottom right to the top left. So I'm always gonna start at one, one. Oh no, I didn't wanna do that. I'm always gonna start at one, one, which is stitch one at row one. And then I wanna finish in the top left which in my case is row 27, stitch 43. You will also notice on Stitch Fiddle that the odd numbers are placed on the right side and the even numbers are placed on the left side. And that's because when you're crocheting on your odd rows, you're reading the graph from right to left. When you're crocheting your even rows, you're reading the graph from left to right. And then another thing with graphs is that the foundation chain is never included in the graph, so your first row of stitches is always your first row of stitches, not the foundation chain. And that also means that um, when you start crocheting, your first row will always be going from right to left, meaning your uh, foundation chain tail will always be facing left. And when you're going from right to left, you're going to have the front side or the right side facing you, and when you're going from left to right or on your even rows, you're gonna have the back side or the wrong side facing you. And then, oh, this is a good one. At the end of each row, like in every row, when you crochet, you have to chain and turn over. So in most cases, when you're working with crochet color work, because you're working with single crochet, half double crochet, double crochet, you're chaining one or chaining two before you turn for each row. Those turns and those chains are never included in the graph. So just up to you to remember that um, before you turn each row, chain one or chain two. Um, yeah, I think that's everything that you need to know about how to read a crochet graph. I'm going to be showing you working on this piece um, and hopefully that makes it a little bit easier to visualize as well. Now that we know everything that we need to know to get started, so we know how to make the basic stitches, we know how to color change and we know how to read a crochet graph we can talk about the different techniques that exist within crochet color work. There are a couple of different techniques that are used. I'm gonna be talking about tapestry crochet and intarsia crochet. There's also fair isle crochet and mosaic crochet, uh, but I've never used those techniques, I think. So I won't talk about them in this video. I'm gonna be talking about tapestry crochet and intarsia crochet, which I think are the most common ones to uh, encounter when you're working with crochet color work. So tapestry crochet and intarsia crochet are both techniques that exist within the category of crochet color work, uh, with the main difference being how you handle your different threads of yarn. So if you remember from the crochet color work definition, if you're doing color work, you will be working with several different colors in the same row of crochet. And that means you'll always have one thread that is the working yarn, that is, you know, the color of the yarn that your next stitch is going to be, that's your working yarn. And your non-working yarn is the one that you're not crocheting with at the current stitch, but that you used maybe two stitches ago, or that you will use five stitches ahead. So you still have it attached somewhere on your crochet piece, but you're not currently have it on your hook, and you're not currently working with it in your current stitch. You get the idea. So in tapestry crochet, what you do is that you carry your yarn. So you crochet on top of your non-working yarn, and that means your work gets a very clean backside, but it also means that your colors will likely shine through each other. So now I wanna show you guys how to do the tapestry crochet technique, which is when you carry the yarn. So I'm in the middle of a color change right now. I'm gonna drop my working yarn, my orange, on the back, and pick up my green, and pull through, and then I want to do green for this entire green part that I made in the previous row. 
and I want to carry my yarn. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have my orange hanging off of the back. I'm going to be working with my green. And when I insert my hook, I make sure that the orange yarn is also on my hook, but uh, behind the green part. Then I pull over, uh, I pull through the green yarn and I make sure that my orange yarn is still, you know, in the middle and I make a single crochet, but I single crochet on top of the orange yarn. So let's do that again, insert, make sure the orange yarn is there and make a single crochet. Insert, make sure the orange yarn is on your hook and pull through. And as you can see, um, the orange yarn shines through the green yarn. In most cases, uh, it will also add a little bit of height. But now we're at the end of my green part. I want to switch back to orange. And this is super convenient about carrying the yarn because now my orange yarn is right where I need it to be. So I can just pick it up and pull it through. And then in intarsia crochet, you drop your non-working yarn when you're not using it, and then you pick it back up when you are. And that means your work will have a very defined front and back. So now say we want to work with intarsia crochet technique. I have my back side facing me because I'm working on an even row. Uh, I'm going to insert my hook uh, and switch colors. So I'm still going to drop my yarn, my working yarn, that I want to switch from on the back side. Since I'm doing an even row, my back side is facing me. So I'm going to drop it in front and then I want to grab my uh, color that I want to switch to, so green, and I just want to drag it across like that. And something that I want to be careful to do is I don't want to have it very, very tight because that will make my tapestry uh, get sewn together. So it's always good to have a little bit of slack in that uh, yarn thread like so and now i continue crocheting what's good if you're crocheting in the direction from where the yarn is coming from you can actually choose to crochet on top of it like this and then if i want to change it back to orange i will change it back i will again drag my yarn across the back and pull through and be sure that my green yarn is on the back when I crochet the next stitch. And what will happen when I'm doing intarsia crochet is that I will end up with a bunch of little uh, patches of um, my back or my wrong side that have the yarn dragged across certain sections of my work. And unlike the tapestry crochet that we did, so this is the row of tapestry crochet where you can see the orange is peeking through. When I'm doing intarsia crochet, you can see that the colors are not shining through. So that's a big advantage, I think, to intarsia crochet is that you get a cleaner front, although you get a messier back. Personally, I almost always use intarsia crochet just because I find it easier. And I also prefer having a cleaner front and a messier back. And that's because I make mostly clothing using crochet color work. And in clothing, you usually have a very defined outside and inside of your garment. But I'm going to show you uh, one of my first graph work pieces that I made. This is the Honey Boo sweater vest. And I made this for Alex. And I made this in 2021 in the spring. So the spring that I started crocheting. So if I can make, and this was completely freehanded too, I didn't even know how to make a crochet graph at the time. So if I can make this and freehand something like this, like you can too, definitely. Uh, and I know a lot of people uh, in my comment section are always like, oh, you're so talented, I could never. I just wanna put it out there that I'm not talented. I just put in the work uh, and practice makes perfect. And uh, I don't think I have an inherent talent for crocheting. Um, so if I can do this, you definitely can too. So this is the back side of the vest. You'll notice that there are a couple of places where I'm using intarsia crochet, which means I'm dropping the non-working yarn and pulling it through. Um, but for most of this piece, I used tapestry crochet, which means that I was crocheting on top of the green yarn when I was doing this white part. 
uh, and vice versa. So this is a close-up of the Honey Boo sweater vest, and I've carried the yarn for this entire piece. I stopped doing it here, I guess, because I realized that I... I don't know, I don't know why I didn't do it here, actually, because uh, apparently I've continued carrying the yarn up here. So not sure why this is intarsia crochet when everything else is carrying the yarn, tapestry crochet. But as you can see, the colors shine through a little bit. So I've carried the green yarn under the white yarn, which means the green is showing through. Here, when I've carried the white yarn under the green yarn, it doesn't show as much because the green is the stronger and more dominant color. Um, and yeah, if it weren't for this piece, I would be able to wear this vest inside out. I'm not sure why I would want to do that, but it would be an option at least. Yeah, compare that to this, which is the backside of my girl boss vest. Here I'm using intarsia crochet, which means I'm not carrying the yarn. I'm dropping my non-working yarn. As, as you can see, it's a very messy back. But as I mentioned before, for me, since I usually wear make garments, that's totally okay because I don't need to wear this piece inside out. But if you're making a wall hanging or you're making a blanket, it could be a good idea to use tapestry crochet because then you might want to be able to flip the piece back and forth. So I am on row 23, as you can see in the graph. Uh, what I'm actually crocheting is not really reflected, but I'm at a point where I want to switch back to red in this stitch. So I have one last stitch in white, which I'm going to start. I'm making this graph in half double crochet, so I'm going to start making half double crochet. But instead of pulling through with the white and finishing it in white, I'm going to make a color change. So I'm going to have my three white loops on my hook. I'm going to grab my red thread from the back of my work and then pull it through. And now red is my working yarn. White is a non-working yarn um, and I have red on my hook and I'm gonna crochet, half double crochet in here. Then I don't want this next stitch to be red. I want it to be brown because the book is slanted. And so I start my half double crochet in red and then I finish it in brown. And I made a color change and now brown is my working yarn and I continue crocheting with it, like so. Um, and I'm gonna continue crocheting with my brown until I reach my next color changing point, which is white. And that's for when I make the outline of the worm. So I'm gonna crochet, uh, just half double crochets until I reach my next color changing point. And as you can see, I'm working with a lot of small skeins and I'm going to show you once I flip the work because it's easier to see from the back side, but I have multiple points of attachment and that's uh, because I'm working with intarsia crochet, I'm not carrying the yarn and to make the background slightly less messy, I have multiple points of attachment. So now I'm at another point where I want to change back to white. I, this is my last stitch in brown. I'm gonna start a half double crochet and I'm gonna drop my yarn. I'm gonna drop it on the back. Realize how I'm not dropping it on the front, I'm dropping it on the back. I'm grabbing my white that's conveniently placed right where I need it and I pull through. So I finish the stitch in white. Then I make one half double crochet, two half double crochets, and then I wanna switch back to pink. I take my pink, which is conveniently placed where exactly where I want it, um, and I crochet until I need to switch back to white. And that's how I make my color changes. So I'm going to meet you back here when I flip my work and we can talk about um, the baby skeins that I'm using and why I'm doing that. Okay, so now I'm at the end of the row. I'm gonna chain two, which is not reflected in this graph, and I'm gonna turn over. Now I have the wrong side or the back side of my color work facing me. That means I'm on an even row. So now I'm on row 24. I'm working from left to right in the pattern. And so what I wanted to demonstrate to you here 
is that I'm working with a bunch of baby skeins. Um, I have multiple points of attachment and I have a little baby skein for each of them with the ex exception of this which is my full size skein of brown and um, I had a full size skein here as well but it ran out so that's why it's baby now um, but over here on the side I still have this skein of yarn attached uh, from a center pull which is very important I'm gonna demonstrate that as well but for all of my other colors that I'm using less of I've cut a big skein of yarn into smaller skeins and that's because I want multiple points of attachment to make it easier to work with and um, what I mean when I see that is that if I'm working with just one point of attachment so for here for example um, I have to drag my non-working yarn across a lot of stitches um, until I use it again and that will give me this long strand of yarn on the back which is not a huge deal but can be annoying especially if you're not that great with tension and you uh, make this super tight then that could make your front panel um, skewed or be very tight or say I was wearing a shirt with buttons underneath the sweater it's very easy that the buttons could get caught in this, which is like annoying, not a huge deal, but it could be annoying. So uh, my thumb rule of thumb is that if the color changes occur within each like, within like five stitches, like here, then I usually skip having two points of attachment. It depends. I mean, if, um, if you look at the girl boss vest again, because I was color changing so frequently, I did not have multiple points of attachment. But here, um, because I was color changing, I mean, it depends on the pattern, right? But I knew that I was going to use white for this and white for that, but not across here. It was worth it for me to have two points of attachment. And here, I think I just got lazy. Um, I probably, yeah, I ran out of one skein and I was like, fuck it, I'll just use it up and carry it, uh, carry it over these stitches because they're not that many. Uh, and here, I think this is like 15 stitches that I've dragged the thread over, which I normally wouldn't do. I probably got lazy here. Um, and then eventually I added another point of attachment for the red. So that's one of my tips is to uh, have multiple points of attachment to avoid a very messy back and to also save on your yarn. You can actually save a bunch of yardage if you're not pulling your yarn across a bunch of stitches where it's not being used. And then um, all of these are center pulls. And that's really important when you're working with color work crochet because if you have something that's not a center pull, if you have something that's uh, you're working from the end of your uh, yarn, you will have the yarn spinning around like this. And if you have, in my case, I have one, two, three, four, five colors, and you would have five different skeins of yarn that are bouncing around like this, they will, they will, it's not they could, they will get tangled, and that's annoying. So having everything from a center pull is very important. And to center pull a small skein, I'm gonna show you how to do it. So um, what I usually do when I make these small skeins, I'm gonna demonstrate it from this big skein now, as I pull a bunch of yarn out um, like this, and then I'm gonna cut it. So bye-bye, big ball of yarn. And then instead of winding this yarn from the end, which is what I used to do, but that gives you this. So we don't want to do that. You grab the yarn from its point of attachment on your crochet work, and then you wrap it from that side. So you're gonna wrap it around your hands um, like this. And then when you have like 15 centimeters left, you will take that little tail, so this, and you're gonna wrap it around. So you're gonna take it off your hands, hold it, and then wrap it around. 
like that. And then you're gonna have this tiny little tail. And to make sure that that doesn't unravel, what I like to do is to take a crochet hook uh, and then just pull it through like that. And now that's secured. And you have a baby skein that is still center pulled. Uh, and if you have a new skein of yarn that is not center pulled, I know like Hobby uh, have uh, center pulls on their skeins, which is great. They have like a little sticker that says start here and you just pull the yarn, which is super convenient. For other yarn brands, like this is Drops Paris, they don't have that. <laughs> so when you uh, open up the yarn, you're gonna have this, which is the yarn and it's not a center pull, so we want to get rid of that and find the center pull. And this is something I didn't know how to do until very recently, which might sound uh, a little stupid, but I just never knew. And the way that you find the center pull is that you dig into the hole of the skein and then you pull out the very middle. And if you're lucky, you're gonna find the I mean, this is the beginning of, of the skein, but uh, it could also be the end of the skein very quickly. If you're unlucky, then you might have to pull out a bigger piece of yarn from the center like this, uh, which will be a little bit messy to work with in the beginning because you will have all of this loose yarn um, before you get to the actual center pull, but it's worth it. It's so worth it. And the reason you want to have a center pull is because when you have a center pull, see now the yarn skein, the skein st stays still. Uh, and that's very important when working with color work because we don't want to have bouncing yarns around because that will mean inevitable tangled threads. Uh, another tip that I have is for when you're moving your yarn around or you're moving your work from different places. And this is especially important if you have bigger skeins attached. Smaller skeins, because they don't weigh a lot, doesn't really matter if you hold the piece vertically, because even if I hold this vertically, this is not going to unravel. But if you have uh, bigger skeins and you hold the piece like vertically, like this, they're going to unravel. So to not do that, uh, and when, when skeins unravel, that means they get tangled. So when I move my pieces, what I like to do is I like to fold uh, everything in like this, like a little package. And now I can stick this in a bag. I can just pick it up. I mean, this is like if I'm moving places, if I'm bringing this with me to work, I'm bringing this with me on an errand, I put this in my bag like this. Or if I'm just moving from the table to the couch, this is also very convenient. Uh, instead of like carrying your yarn and letting all of your skeins dangle and get tangled, uh, which is very annoying. So that's another tip from me is to always fold your work before you move it so that your threads won't get tangled. Um, yeah, I think those are my best tips for working with color work, crochet. Uh, if you have any tips, please let me know. Put them in the comments down below. I'd be very curious to hear what you find are the best uh, tips to work with when you're doing color work. I know that one of the biggest problems for people and also for me is that yarns get tangled very easily. So to avoid that, we use multiple points of attachment and smaller skeins. And we also fold our work when we move it. Hello, editing Annalie here. I forgot to film an outro, of course. So here's the outro. Um, I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you liked it. I had a lot of fun filming it and sharing my best tips and tricks for crochet color work. If you haven't tried crochet color work before, I hope this video made it feel a little bit less intimidating and like something that you could do too. Um, that's my dream, so if that's you, Give it a try, see what you think, and let me know in the comments down below. And also for those of you who have done a lot of color work before, feel free to share your best tips and tricks for working with color work uh, in the comment section down below. I would love to read them. Uh, as always, would be so grateful if you want to thumbs up this video, follow my channel. It will really help me out now as I'm starting YouTube. 
And speaking of that, I'm gonna be posting more regularly. I won't be posting, I won't have a posting schedule, but I'm gonna be more active on here and just like in general have a YouTube presence, which I'm really excited about. And more of that will come in 2024. So happy new year, everyone. I hope you had a great 2023 and I'll see you in the new year. Bye.